Happy day. Welcome. How are you? I am doing good. Nice yeah. and cozy in my nice warm sweater, even though it's sunny outside. The you know, weather is you know, right. <laughs> Yeah, my kids were arguing for shorts to wear shorts today. <laughs> so, okay, so that's a great lead into do you let them? Good question. Um, I, there's always a, a stipulation. So, for example, Connor will want to wear shorts so bad and he's so headstrong. He, Connor's my middle one. He's about to be five. And so I will let him wear the shorts. Um, not so I can say I told you so. But that's, you know, sometimes, because I think as a mom, there's no real, maybe just like a tiny bit of reward for saying I told you so. But it's, in the end, you're still the one <laughs> that has to deal with it. So yep. it only lasts for this month. So I always pack in his, um, his school's great. I always pack in his backpack the days that he goes. I always just put a pair of pants in there. I'm like, he's got a pair of pants in there if he gets cold. Or if we're going somewhere, there will be some in the car. Just and then that way I'm prepared and then he has to admit defeat. So <laughs> um but I so he thinks he wins in the beginning and then all I know is I come out swinging. <laughs> That's perfect. I yeah, I love that. I I have argued with with my son many a times and I did the same thing. I was like, Well, I'm just going to put them in here just in case. Mm -hmm. But he's so stubborn he wasn't gonna put them on. He's like Mom, I was fine. And it was like in the 30s, right? And I thought, these people at school think I'm the worst mom ever, sending my kid to school in shorts. But, and then I put pants in there and I told his teacher and I'm just thinking, I'm like, I can only do so much. So. <laughs> that's, that's true. I mean, growing up in Colorado, um, you know, we had snow. Oh, we would wear flip-flops like in the snow and... We would shovel the snow with our shorts on, and the boys at school always had shorts on. They'd be like blizzard, you know, snow's whipping around, and their leg hair is frozen. So I don't, I think it's just a, a stubborn thing against your mom or whoever it is that's telling you you shouldn't wear the shorts. Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Like, let's, let's, like, Tell us about you. Like, I didn't intro. Like, I'm so sorry. Okay, tell us all about yes. you. So, I am, I always struggle with the exact word because people like to call it a couple of different things. People like to call what I do, like, an influencer or content creator or blogging. But it's hard because I don't know if any of those I really align with or feel like, you know, feel like they fit the mold. But I am a mom of three, and I used to blog um, just about pretty much everything before my kids were born. And then um, after I got engaged, I kind of stopped, and I was working a lot more. Um, and then probably, I think, I'm trying to think. So at that time, social media wasn't, it was, it was, starting to come about. And that was always something that I was interested in. Um, but I had even had, I had an Instagram, like one of the couple first couple months that came out and was like invite only to Pinterest. I was just into all those things. So mm -hmm. if there were beta testing for those things, I was signing up. Um, and so then after, I think my second was born, I had had my Instagram account for a while and um, I just like, it was private. I think I had, you know, 200 people that were all family and friends and I just like to post pictures with some comment some sarcastic comment and then after a while um when we started my husband and I you know started to you see more people on the rise with getting um more and more Instagram followers and whatnot and using these things um to work with brands and what so we had an Instagram account for our dog and the challenge was he just you know bet me one night like you can't get I don't know, 400 followers for our dog, whose name is Willie Nelson, like before X amount of dates. So it was just this challenge to see how the ins and outs of Instagram worked. And so then for a while, I just focused on my dog's account. And then one day, uh, I just sort of was like, oh, I'll just make it my account public. And it was just something fun that I like to do. And then it's sort of from there on, now I do 
a lot and um, also trying to work more with my blog and it all kind of wraps around to just taking pictures of kids, my kids and myself and my family and just sort of trying to be as real as possible. That's, I think, something um, that's always a goal that I like to show myself and I got to find a word for it though, but you know, not. <laughs> This elevator pitch, we're almost to the top of um, the, the, um, the Empire State Building. We're almost there. We're almost there with this elevator pitch. But long story short, I Instagram, I blog, I have a, you know, any social media channel. And I just use those um, to kind of lay out the realness of my family. And when it, when it works out and when it aligns with myself, I work with different brands. Um, and that's sort of a way to make money to do what I just really just like to do it. It's a fun hobby, but I, um, when it works through an opportunity to work with a brand, then I team up with a brand and it's nice to get a little bit of, um, compensation for how much time I probably spend on it. Well, that's awesome. And you have, I'm sorry, if, if you said it, I missed it. Like you have the Facebook group too, right? Oh yes. Yeah. So I started this private Facebook group too, because. Um, I just like to shop and um, I'm like, okay, so I'm part of a variety of um, what we call like affiliate programs. So these affiliate programs, meaning um, I can share a link of something that I purchased on my own dime or I've heard about from a friend. And if um, somebody purchases from that link, then I get a, like it's, it's small pennies, you know, it's not a whole lot from a link. But so the purpose of the group is sort of to justify my <laughs> spending a little bit and shop for others. And so um, I'll post, hey, I got this shirt at, oh, let's say like Target, you know, and I like the way it fits and here's a link to that shirt. Um, and I try to, and I'm completely upfront with people where I'm like, hey, here's a link for that. I've never purchased it. You know, I haven't used it, but I've heard great things. I try to be as open as possible. And, um, you know, I also like to open up the private Facebook group for people to if they're looking for a specific gift or something like that. And I share gift guides in there. So that's just a fun um, way to shop and yes. maybe get a little kickback from shopping. <laughs> that's at least the, the, the sales pitch to my husband about purchases. <laughs> well, I love, I love, love, love the gift guides, but I will tell you, like, I'm kind of like a super nerd, but I'm also like get eaten alive with mosquitoes. This that you posted this summer yeah, yeah. Do you remember this? Yeah. Oh, I can't sing. I'm sorry. But this. We just got a couple more. <laughs> it's so funny when my husband came home with, uh, and, and that's, I actually need to, like when it's, my husband's name is Brendan, and when it's Brendan approved, it's like a big deal, you know. So he came home with a couple more of those from Home Depot and the inserts the other day um, because he, he loves them too. They're, and so, it's like, it's everything. It's not just clothes, it's, you know, mosquito repellent or, you know, you name it, random. I, you, some, it's funny, I should actually share two more of some of the things that are actually like best sellers and it's not what you would think. And so I always like to see what people are actually purchasing always cracks me up. Like something that you think would be like, ah, there's no really point in sharing this. And then that's something that people get crazy about. <laughs> well yeah you should definitely like keep posting those that's awesome <laughs> yeah it's yeah it's funny I think last month it was um was like a or two months ago there was like a sponge I think I'd shared and that was like the big hit <laughs> so oh yeah especially like being all cooped up everybody's you know trying to keep everything clean well so how yeah. how do you like find these items is this something that you know, somebody will send you a message or these are a lot of the things that you've used before or you want to try or like, well, how do you find them to, to um, put up? So a lot of it is just, just my own purchasing. And one thing I get a little nerdy about is I have always been this way is reading up on gift guides, you know, so even prior to anything before, you know, like the, Oprah Magazine, you know, her list, that was always a big deal to me to see what, what's the latest and the greatest and the best gifts. And then um, then it was like, you know, 
uh, Cosmos would do one, you know, like you're the best guides for your girlfriend. So I still read up on all those things. If I see oh. a, a gift guide posted, like I read about it, you know, I get nerdy about new products or new ways you can comb your hair, you know, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. really, can we improve on that? But I'm going to read up on the product and I'm probably going to be sold on it. And so um, I'm a sucker. And so I hope that I can be a sucker and then I can come back and let everybody know, you know, that was worth it. That was not worth it, you know? Um, And so most of it is just me purchasing things, hearing about it, finding about it. Um, Occasionally, you know, brands uh, will ask me to try something or, you know, in exchange for a paid post or whatnot. And um, I, I'm fortunate enough at this time that I can say no. And I think that's important too, to say no, because to, you know, keep my reliability with people who follow me is important. I don't want to just be, you know, I'm not a coffee drinker. And a lot of times people will, a lot of, for some reason, there's a lot of coffee things out there. And so I <laughs> had to say no, no to a couple things like that. And, um, I, but I think that's important to know that I'm, you know, I, I'll, you know, here, look, this is, I, I did get paid for this, but this is something that I was going to purchase on my own, or this was something that just n- seems like a good fit for me or my family or something like that. Um, there was one recently, and this was, it was probably going to be um, the highest uh, paid campaign that I had been pitched, and I was kind of excited about it, um, you know, because at first it was pitched as a healthy lifestyle change in a way of accountability with a coach or something but then then afterwards getting to chat with their brand a little bit more it was more like they they're like you need to cut out all sugar you need to cut out you know all alcohol and then you need to cut out and I and I and then I was like well I mean anybody would lose weight doing that we all know that's what I need to do and so then I was like I'm sorry it doesn't work out right now but um just trying to be that's just what I just want to, to, to keep it as real as possible and and that's what I'm looking for with the connection with anybody who decides to follow me on any sort of social media platform or Facebook group or anything like that just to get that realness but I love that I feel like you are so real like it's so wonderful to read like the sarcastic comments because you'll say something <laughs> that maybe we're all thinking and it's like she said it you know <laughs> Yeah, definitely been always known for my, you know, my TMI, um, you know, like, so I, sh- <laughs> and I have to tone it back a little bit because, I mean, it is out there forever. And that's also something too, with like the kids is the fine line, you know, I don't want to put out certain things about, you know, their struggles that maybe, ha- and not because I, I don't want people to know that we have those, but I also, that's not my information to put out, you know, on the internet for years and years and years, you know, to hear about, oh, this kid was struggling with reading at this age level or whatnot, you know, and so that's one part that I really try, um, you know, to sort of keep to myself, and um, my husband's (laughs) not a fan of wanting to be involved in much, Um, and that's not, that's not his thing, and that's, and so there's that too, so um, those two things are kind of, try to just be the blunt of the joke for the most part, so. But you're setting your boundaries and you're able to say, this is what's appropriate and I can say no. And that's super healthy. Yep. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it takes a while to sort of figure that out, which is crazy to say. But, you know, just with anything in life, it's setting boundaries. But um, when it comes to your family and whatnot, it, that sort of made it more clear. I wasn't good at that before I had kids in, you know, a serious relationship or anything. Well, that's great. Like that kind of led me into something else I was thinking about asking and then it just came out of your mouth. So that that makes me think like, has there been anybody who has guided you through the process or you've looked to or had like some sort of mentorship with, with all of this? Um, so it's funny when I started blogging. So uh, back, I guess I was around 22 or something and, you know, Instagram wasn't such a thing. Um, Facebook was just starting to do more of their business pages and whatnot. So really, um, I was using WordPress, which is a Google blogging platform at the time, and I would find other blogs through that, and and I started to sort of connect with people there. 
And so I cannot remember what year it was, but I went to a blogging conference in Arizona, which was actually really, really cool to go. And then it was just a lot of it was a lot of DIY bloggers. And I thought that that's sort of the route that I wanted to go sort of home projects and crafts and whatnot. And those are things I still like to do. But um, it was just great because there was all of these cool speakers and these, you know, and some of these women I'm still in touch with today. And so that's been kind of a fun way to um, help, you know, each other out and go back and forth with people that I know that have been doing something like this for a while. Um, and I always, especially um, in the social media world, that's one of the great things. Like if you have a question for somebody that if I see some, a blogger or whatever, or, you know, an influencer or whatever that I like, I, I ask, I ask them, you know, worst they can say is they don't want to answer, worst they can say is they don't respond. But that's the great thing about social media is it leaves it wide open for you to ask those questions. Um, most people are able to help you out. And I've done that a bunch of different times. I'm like, hey, how did you work with so-and-so, whatever that, you know, whatever brand, or how did you do this or that? And so that's been a great way to just find whatever mentor you need in the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree with that. One of, one of the people that I, um, that I listened to their podcast, I just directly, yeah, I just sent them a DM and, and then that's, yeah. that ended up being one of my coaches just from a direct, you know, <laughs> yeah. that, that content, you know, the, the connection that way. Yeah, absolutely. Yes it's like a friend uh, it's weird to say because sometimes when you're trying to talk about that person some of these people you haven't met these mentors or you know I'll try to tell my husband oh I saw my friend today they did this and he was like which friend is that I'm like well I never met this person but we've known each other for you know mm -hmm. this many years or whatnot um yeah. so and I one of my first like blogging friends that I ever met she had an Etsy store and this and you know she was so good at what she did and, and she was living in Oklahoma and so when we found out we were in Oklahoma I was so excited um to finally you know we had been chatting for years but we lived in Oklahoma for a, a short time and I got to hang out with her and we were just like you know it was interesting because the first time she was coming over I'm like well we've never met in person but I I mean we know each other we're friends and so um that was kind of cool to make that connection and we still chat all the time and we she's doing something different now and then she used to be a virtual assistant for bloggers and Etsy shops and so I always go to her to talk to things about that too. Oh that's fantastic so she she yeah. has still stayed you know stayed in and with it in the niche and is still you know doing other things with it as well that's cool. Yeah and those those types of people you know with anything social media you need those connections and stuff because to help each other grow and so mm -hmm. I think majority of people are really and this sounds extremely cheesy but we all want to see you know everybody succeed and that's the great thing about this like social media is like really or blogging you know like I said I need a good word for that we'll, look, we'll just you know as we all can succeed and we can all do that by helping one another liking each other's posts sharing each other's posts you know um you know, commenting on each other's posts, all those things, you know, are like claps, you know, for your friends. It doesn't take that long to do and it's, um, and they'll do it back for you. And those are all, uh, that's what, one of the really cool things I think I like about seeing in social media is just that support that way. I 100% agree. Yes, we all, we all can succeed in our own way. Like there's not this like dog eat dog, I need to elbow you out competition. Like you have been given your unique set of skills and gifts and you are here to use it and the way that you use it and utilize it and bring it to the world is completely different than everyone else. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you we can all need get to remember that. that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. We need to read that to ourselves every morning, but it's <laughs> very, very true. Yeah. Make it an affirmation if that's what, you know, kind of mm -hmm. helps you for sure. I love affirmations too. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But well, I love that you had kind of talked like tinged on a little bit that you lived in Oklahoma. I know that there's there's times where you have kind of 
you know, gone to some of these these different places, you know, kind of tell us about about that process a little bit, because I feel like that's sort of a unique and fun thing to do, like as a family and kind of, I don't know, just kind of maybe give us a little chat up about that. Yeah, so out of um, college, my husband, well, at the time it was my boyfriend, so my parents were super thrilled with the idea of this, but we moved to San Antonio from Denver. Um, and so, you know, I didn't understand at the time why they thought that was crazy, but I get it, I get it. But now, um, and so we moved to Denver and, or excuse me, we moved from Denver to San Antonio and we were there for about three years or so and we'd gotten engaged and we were gonna get married and we just decided, let's try to get back to Denver where both of our families were at the time. Let's get back there. And um, we knew we wanted to start having children. And so we found a way to get back there. And my husband is with that company now. And um, then we were there in Denver for a couple of years, had our first um, child. And then his company moved us to right outside Detroit, Michigan. And um, I had been six months pregnant with our second one at that, at that time. So, um, so then our second one was born in Detroit. And then a couple months later, then they moved us to Tulsa. And um, we then had our third in Tulsa. And then a couple, not, I'm trying to think, I guess Ella at that point, I think she, she was over a year. I'm super bad with dates and numbers, but okay, after that, yeah, then we got moved to Austin, which we were excited about because we had really enjoyed Texas. And really the only reason we left is because we were starting a family and we thought that we all wanted to be in Denver, but then everybody's sort of diverse anyways. Now our family's not all all there. Well, you know, so we were, yeah. we were excited to get back to Texas because we had liked Texas so much, you know, behind Colorado, we love Texas. So if they were gonna move us there, we were, you know, ecstatic. So. Austin was great and we didn't have any more kids. <laughs> and, um, and then of course, you know, we thought, oh, we're gonna be in Austin for forever. You know, we were starting to feel super comfortable and our kids were feeling comfortable and we had lived in a great community and we were really making friends. And then the pandemic hit <laughs> and things changed within his company. And they're like, actually, we need you to go to Dallas. So here we are. But um, <laughs> The kids, I mean, have have quite the stories, and they'll be like, "Well, when we move again next," and we're like, "We're not, we're not, we're not moving <laughs> again." Next. Or they'll, you know, um, like all three different states. So that's always our like one line is when we try to talk to strangers. We're like, "Oh, they all get born in different states," and <laughs> that's, our, that's our opening number. But um, yeah, that's it's been a little bit crazy. But as hard as it was, it's definitely um we've got some tough adaptable kiddos and I think that we could consider ourselves adaptable it was, yes. I mean it was a little rough but um yeah hopefully we don't go anywhere else for a while <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> I'm not gonna say that though because you never know yeah you never know no nope. yeah well, speaking yeah. of adaptable, like that makes me think of like the mom who's like in the weeds right now. Like what what would yeah. be like your number one thing that you're like, okay, you're in the weeds. Let me help you. I will do this, say this, go here, you know, whatever. What's like your number one thing that you would say for an overwhelmed mom right now? Um, I think... I, I mean, I guess I wouldn't say this to that mom directly, but I don't think we have ever not overwhelmed. I mean, I only have a six year old, so I'm not that far through my motherhood journey, but I think that we go through, you know, the ups and the downs and how to really help somebody. I just try to think about when I'm at my lowest, you know, lowest with motherhood. Um, I had some great mothers who became my mentor that had a little bit older kids and that they were able to keep telling me, you know, here's where things got better for me. Or, you know, I, and I think just um, relating to that person in that moment just is pretty much just validating their feelings is probably actually one of the most helpful things that it's like, it's okay. You can feel like that. You know, you can, you know, you can be upset. You can say that you don't, want to 
play with your kids today or, you know, or they're driving you batty. You can say those things. Um, we all do. And that's what, you know, you don't realize that there's some weird thing when you have a kid that you just have to prove yourself, I feel like at first. But um, just hearing that validation, that's what I'd want to hear, you know, when I'm overwhelmed. And um, sometimes it's just the smallest things that help. Like if I don't have my younger ones with me and I'm at, like the other day, um, we were, one of my youngest was playing gymnastics and there was a mom there that was sitting watching. She was trying to watch her kid, but then she had smaller ones with her, which I've been in that situation and they were running everywhere. And so I pulled out, like I had, a coloring book and crayons in my you know purse and I'm like you guys want to do this you know just something like that because I've been there when it's really not relaxing to take your one child to an activity while the others are running everywhere it's you know more of an effort so and and then your oldest one comes out hey did you see that somersault no I didn't I didn't see that somersault I was chasing Jimmy across the gymnasium you know so yeah well, that's awesome. I can totally like see that. you doing that too. Like, here, I have this. Do you want to try? You know. Yeah, yeah. You don't want it. You know, it's hard because sometimes you know I don't want to be that creepy lady that's offering weird things to your the kids out right. to your purse yeah. or whatever. But it whatever you can do that sort of is helpful. I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, really makes a difference. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Well, I know that people now that like we've talked about all of it, want to check out all your social stuff. So tell us where they can check you out. Sure. Probably the most active is going to be Instagram. And um, my handle is Lauren Leah Nell. And so that's Lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N, Leah, L-E-A-H. And then my uh, beginning of my last name, Nell, N-E-L. And so it's kind of complicated, but I did find the girl who has just the handle of Lauren Leah on Instagram, but she was like, oh yeah, you can have it, but she's locked out of her account. She can't figure out how to get back in, but anyway, so I just added the the Nell on the end, Um, uh, but that's where you can find me most, and then I do like to do that Facebook, you know, the group, the shopping group, Um, and I have been saying this for months, but I do intend to start blogging some more, um, just sort of some easy reads, um, cause I do enjoy writing so much. So hopefully, um, I'll stop saying and start doing. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking forward to that. Well, it was so great chatting with you. Have a great day. Thank you for having me. Of course.